Yo, yo, yo. What's up, everybody? How's it going? How's your weekend going so far? I mean, the NBA Finals was awesome. I mean, awesome. It was absolutely phenomenal. The Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Lakers slugged it out for seven games. It came down to the nitty-gritty. The Boston Celtics had the lead. They couldn't hold on to it, and they lost. Isn't that something? <laughs> well, folks, welcome back again, everyone. And the NBA draft is coming Thursday, and uh, it's going to get interesting. There's no doubt. And I've done a lot of these reviews for the NBA review. It must be in the high ones now. So we'll call this one NBA review, review part 30. So, folks, in my 30th broadcast, I'm back, and uh, this is a, a special one, and it looks like uh, on some bad news, actually. One of the NBA's greatest players, uh, Manu Bull, has recently died today. Um, uh, sad, you know, and uh, but one thing you got to remember about Manu Bull, he was one of the good people in the game. He just didn't just play basketball and was an all-star and a, a seven-time all-star, one of the greatest basketball players of all time. He gave so much his money and his time to his community and, and, and to his homeland of Kenya. And, uh, you know, you think about all the tough, tough times in parts of Africa and stuff like that. And you look at the World Cup as hope, you know, and uh, you look at, a lot of things you see in the world nowadays with violence and, you know, just nobody caring. And, uh, you know, that's one person in the world that did care. Manu Bo was the real deal, everyone. And uh, I'd say a couple minutes today on this Father's Day to remember one of the greats of all time. As we move on to some news from the association, it looks like the Philadelphia 76ers have got this trade circus going. The deal yesterday for Samuel D'Alembert has sent Samuel D'Alembert to the Sacramento Kings for the likes of Spencer's Haas and Andreas Nocioni, the former Chicago Bull, will be heading to the 76ers for Samuel D'Alembert. This is actually a pretty good deal for the Sacramento Kings. Now they get a shot blocker in D'Alembert. You know, Samuel D'Alembert is making quite a bit of money. He hasn't really lived up to the expectations that his team expected out of him. Um, the ownership, management, and even the fans. And all at one time, I felt Dallenberg was going to be one of the great uh, NBA centers to play the game. You know, he became a Canadian citizen, this Haiti, Haitian native. Uh, you know, uh, just just couldn't uh, get it going. You know, uh, a few years ago, I thought he was going to be a, one of the greats, and uh, you know, I, now he's just. Pretty much now he's going to probably be a journeyman. And uh, he has all the talent. He's still young, down bear, and uh, he just needs to get his game going. And uh, he'll be uh, a productive player in the association. When I look at Spencer Hawes and I look at Andres Nuccioni, we, we have two guys here that um, just maybe might turn around the 76ers' fortunes of being such a bad team. Now they have guys that can shoot. You have uh, Spencer Hodges is a pretty decent rebounder. He was a high draft pick of the Sacramento Kings, late draft pick. He was had a great college career when he did play. And, uh, you know, that's what happens. Some of these college players never really turn out to be anything in the association. And uh, maybe Spencer Hodges might give this Philadelphia 76er team some help on that team. You know, you have Maurice Spates. you got some other young guys on that team. Uh, that are getting the job done. So, you know, they bring in this young guy in Spencer Heise. He might give him another another player that can play. I mean, Godala could use some help, you know, a little breather here and there, and they'll get Utrioni on as a second unit. So this could be a very positive move in the end. So let me look at this trade for Sacramento. This gives them a shot blocker. They have never had a shot blocker since Chris Webber. And you look at Sacramento, Tariq Evans had a rookie of the year type of year. He had an amazing year. Now you got yourself a shot blocker, a guy that can rebound a little bit. And, you know, you go in the offseason, maybe go sign a few players. Wouldn't that be sweet? So anything's possible. And another thing on the Los Angeles Lakers. 
Kobe Bryant, amazing. This guy, he didn't play good in Game 7, but his team picked him up. And then he turned his game on, like he normally does for almost 50, or he's been in the league, what, 14 years now? So, I mean, most of his career, he's put on some amazing games, Kobe Bryant. And there's a reason he's the MVP. And uh, he showed in this playoffs that he was the MVP. Phil Jackson, yet again, an 11th championship. Um, congratulations to the entire Los Angeles Lakers organization. Jerry Buss, Mitch Kupchak, everybody. You guys all did the job. You worked hard, you played hard, and you showed what it's all about in the end. Basketball's a tough game. You got to play together as a team. Everyone has to sacrifice to become the best. You look at Lamar Odom playing a better defense, stepping his game up. He didn't play good in the beginning of the series against the Celtics, but he picked his game up as the series became more important. Derek Fisher, he came off the bench, and he still contributed with a big-time three. He maybe only had six points in Game 7, but he had a big three and helped his team. Paul Gasol was a monster out there. Grabbed rebounds, played awesome. And that's one thing that you can learn from in Paul Gasol. Everyone said he was too soft, but he proved he can play with the big boys. He stopped Kevin Garnett. Garnett played awesome, no doubt about it. But Paul Gasol, when he had to turn his game on, saw Adam Drew Bynum not 100% playing with a bad knee. He stepped his game up, took, took the pressure off of Kobe a little bit, made the buckets when they had to be made. Another thing with the Celtics, Kevin Garnett turned his game on. The guy's playing with some bad knees, but he still goes out there and plays with pure heart. Ray Allen sets a career-high record with 